Welcome back to Sussex Farm for episode 18 with me, Mr. Sealy P. I'm up in field 15 and the wheat harvest is in full swing. I need 80,000 litres um, for William Holbrook, the miller, up at the windmill. I'm not sure I'm going to get that. I was hoping I would. Because this is a big field. Uh, oh, I might do actually. I'm just thinking. I'm on. Let's just go and grab the trailer. That's my third load. So this has already got 20,000, 21,000 litres in it. Yeah, 21,000 litres in it. This is the third load, so this will take me to 30,000 litres. I'm not even halfway across the field, so I should hit 80,000. Hopefully, this will be another one of those ones I'm going to come really, really close, aren't I? It would be nice to come really, really close, but just about do it, rather than really, really close and fail. There's always next time. I don't have another wheat field at the moment. I honestly thought this would be enough. Um, I've got a couple of runs I need to do. I've got a pig food. No, it's not really, well, a hack, kind of a hack. I don't know if it is. It's just something I thought of the other day. A few people say to me, why didn't you just tip straight into the trailer with the bucket on the um, wheel loader rather than using the conveyor belt? And I know some people have just put a pig food silo right down by the cell point and then just put a conveyor belt going into the cell point, which is another way of doing it. And I thought, sure, there's got to be a, there's got to be a way of doing it. I'll show you that in a minute. Plus, the um, manure I put down the BGA has now been digested and is now digestate, uh, and therefore, right, so we can carry on. That's the first 31,000 litres. Um, and therefore can now be transported as digestate over to the um, the slurry cell point. So what I will do is grab the lorry, grab the tanker, which I think is down at my liquid storage facility near the farm, and um, we'll go and sell a, a load of digestate. I'm just curious... Hang on, I lost myself again. Uh, yeah, probably. I'm curious what I'll get for a load of digestate. Plus I want to try out the pig food thing as well. So I'll do that. I've also been asked to do a fuel run down to the docks because there's fuel needed at the west coast. And again I trawled through my messages and stuff and I couldn't find who sent that. What I normally do when I get any of those uh, messages, whether it be on my Facebook page, whether it be um, a comment left, on my YouTube videos, uh, I always I screenshot it or print screen, then I add it to a folder for each map. Seriously, that's how organised I have to be. And then, uh, I, then I go through every time I'm doing an episode. For example, now we're doing Sussex. I've got the Sussex Farm folder open with all the contracts I've been given that are in that folder. Um, and I kind of gradually work my way through them so I can remember on each one what I'm supposed to be doing and for who and Barris I haven't forgotten your TMR I promise I haven't I know you said 50,000 litres a day or in one load and I may have to do one load but it's, I'm trying to get all these other jobs fitted in at the same time I, you know, I'll get to it, I will it's on my things to do list I always wonder if I just go 
belting across there, full tilt, whether I'll just thread the needle or whether I'll just crash into something. Uh, I need to go left, left, left. Let's go. I'm thinking I might need another tractor, another higher horsepower tractor, because I'm very conscious of now I need to start cultivating um, and even subsoiling, whatever. If I'm going to be using some bigger like bits of machinery, I've got the Fent 1050 and I've got this, but this is only 313 horsepower. Um, if I've got the Fent doing muck spreading, then I don't have a tractor with a high horsepower to pull some of the... Uh, oh, come on. Yeah, to pull some of the um, equipment I want to use. Bit of wheel slip there. So first load to the windmill. And I think I was offered 140 or 150,000 pounds for this contract. And as you can see, exactly what I was talking about on Low Note Farm of the day, it's saying dollars because I was on Low Note Farm. I've come back over here and it hasn't changed. So, we're back on pounds. Yeah, so that was what, I can't remember what I said now. Is it 20,000? Something like that, wasn't it? 16, 18, I'll have a check in. Um, and then, um, Whatever I make selling it at the actual point here, I'll deduct that from what they were going to pay me. So I'm not kind of getting double paid, if that makes sense. And anyway, I'm sure it'll be fine. Sometime later, only a little while, I'm up at the store. Um, I've got the truck, I've got the 70,000 litre trailer, I've got the fuel trigger conveyor belt. And here's what I decided to do. Because the fuel trigger conveyor belt will, uh, like the buckets do, will empty the pallets wherever you need them to what I thought was why don't I just do a direct pallet to conveyor belt rather than using the bucket and what I kind of do I wasn't sure if it would do this actually so what I did was backed up the conveyor belt to the furthest point that I could be and it would still empty the pallet now I know realistically I would need to be right next to it I'd have to empty it tip it in or shovel it or whatever I need to do but like I say this is a kind of a little hack that could go on in the background but that's as close as I want to get. If I get too close with this to the pallet, when I try and buy another pallet, it won't spawn here. It will spawn one over because that's blocking the spawn point. So that's as close as I want to get. If I back the trailer up, that will then unload what's on the belt. I've already done one pallet. It will unload that one. Then all I've got to do is just keep rebuying pallets. And rather than having six lined up, filling up the bucket, putting it onto the conveyor belt or tipping it straight in there, I can do it straight from purchase to conveyor into um, into the trailer. That That's kind of the theory. Um, so, and I'll go down and get the slurry tank and we'll do that. But this should work. I'm also hoping if I go down to sell it, I'm not going to get clobbered and lose a load of money. Right, so that's now gone. So what should happen is, if I go in to buy another pig food pallet, I'll buy it, it'll place it in the same place, it'll fill it up. So realistically, what I've got to do... Let's just cut that. All I've got to do is just keep buying pig food pallets until it's full up. That's, that's the theory. So if I step out of the way now, there's no point buying multiple ones because if I respawn one at a time it will respawn in the same spot.
and then you know it will take a little while to do it but no longer than respawning six or however many and then putting them in a bucket tipping the bucket in or tipping the bucket onto the conveyor it should do exactly the same thing and so on so I'm going to carry on doing that and fill that trailer up once that's done as well that will then be ready to go down to the livestock market that so I'm going to take the truck going at the slurry tank go over to the BGA pick up a full load of digestate take that to the slurry sale point and see what I get for that um, I've got the culted plow over there because I was going to do something with that I did mention that as well didn't I I'm just worried I'm trying to do too many things in each episode but then I've got so many things on my list of things to do plus like I say if I want to get another tractor on my drive over here with this I suddenly thought you know what I might do I might see if there's another Oshkosh available and buy a second one because I can have one for transporting the tankers around one for doing the trailer the 70,000 trailer just I thought it would make sense now let's fill this up sixty thousand litres of digest eight. So I had some in here from before. Then I had the 70,000 litres of manure we brought over the other day. And it's a one litre for one litre. Every litre of manure you dump, you get a litre of digestate. So now we'll go over to the slurry cell point. Make sure I go to the right one. And we'll see what this pays out. Because for a load of 70,000 litres of manure, it was 1,600 and something, 1,616 pounds. So as long as I make, and then I made, what did I make? 4,000 selling it at the BGA. So I'd already doubled my money. So everything now is profit on this. I could be using it for slurring the fields, but. Let's see. I've been offered a very interesting contract over here. Uh, like a biomass... Th yeah, it's an interesting one. We want the cell point, which is that one. Let's see what we make, shall we? Thirty thousand. So that's thirty grand, clear profit for transporting some things around and then getting kind of reused. I mean, that's brilliant. That, that's yeah. Okay, well that's good. I've done that, so I know that works. Actually, I'll do what I did before. I think I'm going to leave this here. See how the wheat harvest is going. Sugarcane looks like it's growing fantastically, which is a bit of a surprise, really, considering its location.
right so here's where we stand uh, the money's fluctuated it's gone up and down up and down um, the wheat harvest is nearly finished um, I've done a second load to the windmill the third load so that's two loads at 31 so that's 62 which means I only need 18,000 to fulfill the contract the third trailer has got 20 one or 22,000 litres in it so that's the contract complete I need to sell it that's still there so I'll do that in a moment this is full that's got 70,000 litres plus there's some on the actual uh, conveyor but what I have done I did a fuel run um, off screen obviously the selling of the second load of wheat which put me up around nearly 600,000 I think it was the fuel run was to the petrol station down the bottom of the hill so I'd done what I said I was going to do I bought a second Oshkosh in Mr. CDP. I'm not sure if I. Mm, yeah, I mean. Yeah, it's Mr. CDP Green anyway. It goes with the chassis on here, so it'll be fine. Um, so that's. We've got two of those now, which is going to mean transporting things around, and I'm going to keep moving the same lorry all across the map to do various different jobs. So I've got two of them to do it now. So let's cover that up this will now go down to that worked really well actually doing the fill trigger and the pallets I'm gonna go a different route so I don't get stuck on that hill like I did last time I'm gonna go this way down and hopefully I don't make a well, I shouldn't make a loss on this it's cost me a few quid to fill it up and then like I say because of the different things I've done off screen the fuel and stuff it's hard to tell how the money's fluctuated but this is bumpy Let's give a bit more power up the hill. The 900 horsepower this thing produces is perfect. You know what, in my head I was racking my tr brain trying to think where did I leave the, um, the water tank? And it's there, that's where I left it. I've got the fuel one, I used the slurry one, and I kept thinking I've left the water one somewhere and I couldn't remember where. So, let's take the cover off. Now, next job on my list is going to be hay and hay bales. I've been meaning to do it and I keep putting it off, but it needs doing. Although the wheat contract will be done, and anything else I get off that field now will go down to CDG Bakery. Okay, let's see what we make, shall we? A lot, by the look of things. Wow. I mean, to be fair, 205... I didn't make as much as I made last time. I'm pretty sure last time it cost me over a hundred thousand to fill it. Hmm. Yeah. Right. What I could do, since I'm here, I could do another load of manure and take it and put it in storage. Could do that. I think I'll do that. I'll do a full load of this. Since I'm here, it's, it would be mad not to. The money I've just made, get a full load for just over 1600 either put it into the silo at the main farm or take it down to the biogas.
So while the 70,000 litre the BSM trailer is filling up just over there, I've walked across, it's Miller time. Um, my contract for William Holbrock, for Mr and Mrs Holbrock at the windmill, is nearly complete. The last 21,000, so I've actually given 81,055 litres. They wanted 80,000. He wanted 80,000. And that's it. So, one contract complete. This will now go back over to field 15 and um, everything off that field will now go down to CDG Bakery. So I've had about £50,000, I think it was 19 or 18000 whatever it was in the first load, 17 in the second, 11 on this, so I'm looking at about 50000 I'm sure the contract was for either £140,000 or £150,000. So, depending on how I'm doing financially, and to be fair, I'm doing alright at the moment. Um, I might hold off on collecting that payment. I've had part payment, a third of the money. So what I might do is um, tell the miller and his wife to hold on to their cash. And then maybe at a later date, should I need the money, I can always come to them. So, O to the 15, grab the rest, and I think I need to get some uh, cultivating done in some of these fields because uh, I've been saying that, and every field I harvest, I'm not actually preparing for the next crop, which I should have been doing. I'm trying to get each job done and move on to the next job, and I'm not multitasking enough. So, like I said, another tractor probably is in order. That will definitely help. I can spread myself a bit more across the map, I think.
as promised I'm back up at the store and I'm going to do what I was going to do with the culti plow now if we go into um, I think it's on the cultivators the culti plow uh, is 82,000 to buy in the big bud pack 8 meters wide and requires 420 horsepower to operate which is a fair amount of horsepower um, the other option available I've been thinking about this and I don't know if I've seen it someone else do it I honestly can't remember um, is using the Lemkin Gigant 800 now that is 63,000 to buy but it's got two attachment points and if you attach two of the Kuhn DC401s on there they're four meters wide that gives you eight meters as well now you've got to combine the horsepower though two of the DC 401s at 130 horsepower each is 260 horsepower and then I think for the Gigant it's 50 so 260 and 50 is 310 so that's 310 horsepower requirement then allowing for hills and that kind of thing as opposed to the Culti Plow which requires 420 so it comes down to I mean obviously there's the slot issue that's going to be well, that's two each, that's only four. And then the Gigant is seven, so that's 11 slots. I'm pretty sure the Culture Plow comes in about eight or nine. We'll see in a minute when I sell it. So I'm going to give it a go anyway. I'm just curious to see. I mean, obviously, that's easier to work with and it folds up smaller. I was just trying to think about trying to reduce the horsepower requirement. If it doesn't work out, I can always just buy another one. I mean, I suppose that's 65,000. So, and that's the point as well, I think, price wise, like I say, the Colt Plow is what, 83? 82. The other one's 63, 10, and 10, which comes out 83. So it's going to be 1,000 more to do the other setup. I'm going to give it a go. I, I, like I say, I don't know. how straightforward that's going to be all oh, the money's gone up as you've seen i did a fuel run i've done a load of water runs um because obviously i'm thinking next episode <coughs> i'm thinking next episode uh new tractor a bit of tractor shopping i think uh, so we want one of those and one of those. Now, admittedly, I have bought the Fent 1050 up, which has got 517 horsepower, only because I haven't bought another tractor yet. Um, I did wonder if that comes in at 300 and something horsepower, whether or not the Case Optum would pull it or not. I don't know. Oh, that's in the way now, isn't it? Actually, I can move that. I can always move it back next time I need it. Oops, wrong way. If I just pull it right forward out of the way. Now I'm going to buy it at some point. I'm going to get a cultivator in its own right. This being like a, a plough uh, subsoiler, it will give me the cultivating texture while subsoiling, so the ploughing at the same time. It's only 8 metres wide, so if I want to go for something bigger. I can. Just curious how this will work out, how easy it will be to use, etc, etc. So we'll just, let's give it a whirl. What's the worst that can happen? It all fails and I have to rebuy the bit I had before, just, you know. I can do a fuel run tomorrow, I can do some more water runs tomorrow, and I can make that money back if I need to. I forgot how slow that is to move. Right, we've got them in the end, so I need to hook up one. This side. Now, the only problem with this is it doesn't fold up like the Coulter Plough does, so it's quite a wide thing to be going down the road with. So, yeah, I suppose that's one downside okay 
Now they sit incredibly neatly next to each other with no break in the furrows. Mm. Okay, now can I adjust that? Okay. Well, that's alright for the moment. Like I say, it's a bit wide. Field 28 needs ploughing. So I can plough and cultivate. Yeah. Maybe should have taken the separate bits. Ignore the bollard. I'll thread the needle with that. There you go. Look at that. Perfect. Took the minor side. This is, yeah. I don't know. The culture plough, and again, the culture plough definitely is narrower and easier to transport. And once I'm off the main roads, I mean, I could obviously break this down and put it onto separate, tra yeah, separate trailers would be a pain, wouldn't it? It's a test, if anything. So this has been muck spread, but it hasn't been ploughed. So I bought it unploughed. So what I need to do now is put it onto the gigant lower. But that won't put them low enough. Then I go onto one of them, lower it into the ground. Just go a little bit closer. On the other one, lower it into the ground. And away we go. it works so as far as it goes it's the lower horsepower requirement for an 8 meter width it will give you a ploughing state because of the subsoilers and the cultivating state transportation not the best but I have to say not bad on the whole See how it turns around. I've set a worker, so we'll see how it turns around at the end. Now, admittedly, with 500 horsepower tractor, I could probably get a wider plough, and I could get a wider cultivator, run one over than the other. But I suppose because this does it in two stages, if I've got other jobs to do, I can just leave it running. It's not the end of the world. Okay, that was pretty good. Right, let's have a look in at the map. We're on field 28, which is over here. So what we're looking at, we've got growth. It has been harvested. It's now being cultivated. If we look at soil composition, brilliant. So um, with the manure on there, the fertilizer states there, and now I'm ploughing, the red's going and the blue's coming in. So that's doing exactly what it should be. Very happy indeed. So I'm going to leave that to chug away. It's an option anyway, it's definitely an option. Farm dog agrees, definitely an option. Oh, now that's an issue. It's turned and gone back to go over the what is I thought it was going to go back out a bit it's done it is going back out a bit it's done why has it done that right suck the worker well oh, that's going to be a problem then I might have to go back to the culture plow if I can't leave a worker and trust them not to go over the same bit backwards and forwards 
that's going to be a bit of an issue. So when I see you next, um, I may well have the culture plow back. Who knows? I'll see how the rest of this goes. Um, we come to the end of another episode. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, then give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. If you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do, thanks for watching. <laughs>